Venice Beach was always packed. It's packed today. It was packed, you know, a decade ago, two decades ago, five decades ago. It was always packed. Uh, people just love to come here. Tourists love to come here. People from inland come to the ocean and they go to the beach. They go and work out here. They play basketball, handball and all the different things. Go roller skating, jump rope, do their fitness exercises, go swimming. So it's really a great place to hang out and it was really uh, a great joy when I first came here from uh, Austria to see all of those activities. The place where we worked out, which was called Gold's Gym, was a place that was kind of the mecca of bodybuilding. There was Vince's Gym in the valley and there was Gold's Gym over here. And I'm gonna stop right here. This was the place. There was a big door right here. And we used to hang out right here. This is where we got our fresh air all the time. Then we walked in again, did some squats. It was actually a very small space with a lot of equipment around it and everything. Thousands and thousands of pounds of equipment and everything. But everything was packed in there with the natural skylight. And people from all over the world would come together here and would work out. It was kind of the place to go. And it had champions from around the world, from the European champions, South American champions, Asian champions, Australian champions. I mean, from literally from all over the world, they came here and trained here. And so it was really the greatest workout atmosphere that you can find. And then we went from there, just a few blocks down here, and we turned right at this uh, traffic light. And this was all kind of short distances. And then there was the kind of a muscle beach even though it was called Venice Beach, but we called it Muscle Beach. And uh, they had a wonderful weightlifting platform out there. And the advantage there again was that when you worked out on that weightlifting platform, you could get your tan. But it was not the kind of a tan that sucked. <laughs> but it was the kind of a tan that you really could use in competition. What I mean by that is sometimes when people lie in the sun, then they look like they got tanned in the front and tanned in the back, but they're not tanned all around, underneath the arms and everywhere. And so when you worked out outside, you then could literally get a tan everywhere. And um, you, you then sweat, and you also had kind of, please, thank you, thank no you. problem. Hey, how are you doing, darling? <laughs> all my fans from uh, 40 years ago. So anyway, so we would come down here and then the police usually always comes right by here. They love it. He's, look at that, she's so friendly. She now says to herself, says, wait a minute, is he really driving where this is a drive? Is it forbidden to drive? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> How are you doing? You smile, of course, a lot. You always smile when you talk to officers and stuff like that. I did that then already. I smiled a lot always at the officers. And then here is, the wonderful, you see, the wonderful place where we work out. Now we go out, you can look at that. See, maybe high to the officers, they maybe are interested in talking a little bit and schmoozing. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, we're doing, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're taping, and I'm showing to the younger generations where I used in 1968 when I moved from uh, Austria to California that this was the place where I used to come, train at Gold's Gym, which is right there in Pacific Avenue. Right. Then we walked over here to get a tan and to train out here. So I'm educating them on right. how it worked in the old days. You okay. put them to work. So, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So let, thank you very much for letting me drive us here. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Exactly. Right. Have a good day. Okay. Yeah, good to see you. So this is the place uh, where we work out, you have all the machines in there. It was a little smaller in the days when I worked out, but the advantage was when you did chin-ups, when you did your presses, when you did your curls, you got the tan everywhere, and then we would run over to the ocean, jump into the waves, got the salt water all over and got really again tanned all around. So this was the, 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 this is the weightlifting pit basically. So we go around slowly, everything within the law of course. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> we, we almost ran this guy over, but he was not a bodybuilder, so what do we care? Anyway. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. There is one thing that we need to look at, and this is right here. Get ready for this shot here, okay? I mean, there's nothing you have to worry about. You just get out here. I leave the engine running, so we can take off in case another police car comes. Which one is a good shot here? You have it? Yeah. I got the double bicep. Now you see, you have a good frame? Let me yeah. know when you have a good frame. Yeah, now you here. see the advantage is when you come down here to Muscle Beach and to Venice Beach platform and you train for that many decades like I have and pumped up the body and got tanned and win the championships, then they eventually build a building to have you on the building, a picture of my winning pose. And that's right here. Pow! How about that, huh? Anyway. <laughs> Only one more thing I show you guys that no one ever got to see. I'm gonna go now down two blocks and there you will see the first wall that Franco and I built when we got into the construction business. Oh, and it's still the day, 40 years later, standing there proudly and in best shape. Of course, if it would be chipped off in some areas, or a brick is missing, Franco and I, we have guaranteed then already that we will come and fix it because I think that the warranty is for life. <laughs> and I told Franco it should be ready at any time that we get a phone call. And, um, have to fix a few walls, put some blast down it or something like that. This wall here was the first wall that Franco and I built. It was back in 1971. And um, we were commissioned by this uh, gentleman here that owned Gord's Gym then. His name was Bud Denditz. And he said, how much would it cost to build a wall around my house? And I just made up the number and I said, $5,000. And Franco said, no, it doesn't cost 5,000. I think we can do it for 2,000. He said, Franco, relax, it's $5,000. And then we got the material, the bricks and everything, the cement, we tore down the old wall and then we built this one. And we had a few of the bodybuilders help us and it's still standing here today. It will stand here forever because Franco and I, we built it well with some steel rods in there and everything like that that goes all around the things that we're very proud of, the workmanship that we did. But every so often, Franco uh, had the tendency of putting broken glass on top of and cemented in on top of the wall because that's what they did in Sardinia. And uh, it's, of course, totally against the law in America, and especially in California, because when someone wants to jump over, they will cut their hands. But that's the idea why the Sardinians did it. But the, here, of course, uh, it's against the law. So we had to some, take it down by uh, some of the walls that we did that. And, um, and uh, well, it was no problem. A few people cut their hands, but hey. All right, back to the office so that the catcher is happy. <laughs> <laughs> did it drive you more to uh, train with the guys than, you know, everybody training in a different area? You think seeing the guys on a regular basis was more drive? I mean, other than like Sergio and a couple guys here and there. Well, we saw, because even Sergio came out here to train. Mm, okay. Yeah, Sergio came uh, periodically, and uh, but I also went to visit him. Yeah, Chicago, so Mephic, right? Yeah, I stayed yeah. in his uh, uh, apartment uh, for several days. And his wife and him were very gracious hosts. And, um, you know, we had really wonderful workouts and he was very generous with sharing information and everything you know we uh, we posed together we trained together talked about eating and food supplements and psychology and all this stuff it was really great franco uh, many times didn't like to train as much as i did because his body didn't need it. He's, he, as a matter of fact, he got sometimes burned out by overtraining. Whereas for me, overtraining, it was the thing that actually made me more cut and gave me this extra definition without having to diet too severely. 
and um, Franco kind of would leave three quarters through the workout and sometimes in the evening he would not come so I said to myself well I got to go since I really have only uh, eight nine weeks left to go and train for the Olympia in 1975 I got to get someone that is as hungry as I am with the training and that's why I switched over for that period to kind of Ed Corney to rely more on Ed Corney than on Franco even though Franco and I we trained together but Ed Corney became the guy that then on the end did the arc that, that then pushed through and was with me especially when he came to the leg workout where Franco just did his five sets and the, the squats and then five sets leg extension he would walk out because he had naturally big thighs and strong thighs I had to do my 25 sets and so uh, Ed Corney would then be there to grind it out because he wanted to beat Franco uh, that year in the Olympia. And so uh, he was all kind of gung-ho that he's gonna train with me and he's gonna go and beat Franco, which was a nice ambition to have because he had a great body and he had a fantastic posing routine and everything. But you know, he can't beat Franco. I mean, Franco was just so massive and he was so strong and so thick and so ripped. I mean, he was this fresh, kind of unbelievable meat on his body that was just, you know, unlike anything else. And deep striations and deep muscle separations, everything. And so he will be, you know, always a dangerous guy to compete against because he was just, he was so good and he was, you know, like Danny Padilla later on was called the Giant Slayer. Franco was the Giant Slayer because he, he beat everybody in all of those Mr. Universe contests that he won and uh, Mr. Olympia. He beat the big guys. 